Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Starry Teller Forecast for Libra for April 2013. So if Libra is your sun sign, or Libra is your rising sign, then this is for you. Go to AnnieHelpsYou.com or the link below this video to check out um, information on personal readings and free newsletters and gifts and all of my other services. April 2013 is such an exciting time. It's especially exciting, I think, for um, signs that mesh with fire. So all the air signs and all the fire signs will be particularly supported and, and um, revved up in a harmonious way. So Libra is an air sign. There's also a lot of other reasons why I'm excited for Libra for April 2013. So. April 10th is the new moon in Aries. Um, actually, let me back up for a second. The astrological zodiac calendar, New Year, starts March 20th. So many people are used to New Year's being on January 1st, and they go by that. But many of those people don't resonate with that feeling like it's a new year. It's cold. It's quiet. It's a very introspective time. But now is the astrological new year, and it's a fantastic time to make your New Year's resolutions and have a lot of astrological support around them. So be thinking about that. The new moon in Aries is the best time of the year to make a vision board. So cutting out pictures, images, words that resonate with the things that you want to embody and create in your life over the next year, put them on a vision board and do it. I like April 9th, even though the new moon is on April 10th. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, but one of the reasons, well, I'll get into part of it. One of the reasons is that there's a conjunction between Venus and Mars on the 7th and 8th. So when you merge those energies and put it all together, it's really powerful. Venus rules love, beauty, and money. Mars rules energy, action, the male energies in life. You put them together, and we know the potentials with that. So it's a very spicy transit, and it's especially spicy for Libras because the new moon that brings in new energies the Venus and Mars conjunction is all happening in a favorable sign to Libra, all happening in your seventh house of partnership. Partnership, um, romantic partnership, business partnership, client relationships, friends, close relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships are ruled by the seventh house. You've got a tremendous amount of new energy there. Um, so it could bring, you know, Venus could be ruling money and Mars and new moon there could be fantastic new clients. Um, fantastic new job opportunity, fantastic new collaboration, or an awesome new romantic partner, or a better version of the current relationship that you have. So in any case, it's really, really good energy. Um, what's happening at the same time um, in April, not, not the same dates, but the same general energy of April, are eclipses. Okay, there are, the eclipse cycle starts April 25th with a series of three eclipses, two total eclipses in May and one partial lunar eclipse April 25th. I tend to focus more on the lunar or the total eclipses because they tend to carry more weight, but definitely, especially if you have planets in Scorpio, um, this partial lunar eclipse can have some effects as well. So eclipses tend to start to cook up their energies about eight weeks before, so already, you know, March, April, these are getting very strong. Um, lunar eclipses eclipse things out. Solar eclipses open windows to new things. And the places where these um, eclipses are occurring for Libra, um, the new, the solar eclipse is happening in your eighth house. There are two partnership houses in the chart, the seventh and the eighth house. The seventh house relates to partnership, the partnership itself, the one-on-one -on -one level of the partnership. The, the Scorpio, step eighth house energies, rule you and resources, you and a deeper level of relationship, you and the bank, you and a business partner, you and resources, separate just from the relationship. But it's a partnership house nonetheless. So we already talked about all of that new energy in your one partnership house. Now you have a solar eclipse happening in your eighth house, which is more partnership, partnership, partner, partnership, partnership. Um, and this has to do with resources. So if you're trying to get a bank loan, you're trying to get funding to go to school, you're trying to um, get money for a nonprofit, you're trying to have access to other people's money, you're trying to clear up debt, you might be getting married and then your resources become tied. Lots of strong energy around that in April, getting stronger in May, 
Um, eclipses can sometimes take time to deliver news, or they can deliver news up to eight weeks early. But this whole time between March and August is very um, full of this eclipse energy, new energy, with the solar eclipses. Now, the lunar eclipse, the total lunar eclipse, um, was at four degrees of Sagittarius, and that falls in your third house, in the third house for Libra. I don't ever want to make anyone afraid, and I don't focus on fear-based um, astrology. I'm always very hopeful, and I always try to use the transits that even are most challenging in the most positive ways and help other people to do the same. But occasionally, there are precautions that come up that I really feel like I need to mention um, so that perhaps it could be helpful and prevent, you know, more difficult things. Whenever there are lunar eclipses in the third house of transportation, People with these placements, either in their solar or natal chart, have a higher tendency to have problems with transportation, such as accidents, things happening to their car, bike, walking. It's a really, really, really good time to, to start better habits with driving, especially driving and communicating. So no texting while driving, no texting while biking, no texting while walking. Always act as if, I think this is a good practice anyway, act as if other people are not watching at all when you're driving or walking or anywhere near traffic. But this time um, is really, really important for you to focus on this because it can help you and it can, you know, prevent things, I do believe, in many cases. I had never had a car accident in my life, and when I had lunar eclipses happening in my third house, I had three Actually, four events happened to my car in that time of the eclipses, and I haven't had any problems since. Two car accidents, one snowy tree branch crushing my windshield, and one random shattering of my, my window when I opened it. It's driven by this lunar eclipse in the third house energy. So just be very, very wary and um, very aware of that. Also, if you don't have um, glass coverage on your auto policy, consider adding it. It's not that much more. I learned this from my incidences. I didn't have it for either of the two windshield incidences, but you better believe I have it now. It costs a couple of extra dollars a month. If you don't get it and you have a problem with your windshield, you have to pay your deductible to fix your windshield or another window. So if your deductible is $500, and your windshield's crushed, you're going to come out $500 to deal with this glass issue that might be, that might come up from the eclipse. But if you have add the glass policy and it happens, and you don't pay anything and your car gets taken care of, and then you love me forever because I told you to do that. And it's not going to hurt you to have it. So anyway, that's a little tidbit that I figured out. Um, I can't see your personal chart. I'd like very much to see your personal chart. The things I can see in charts are really cool. And I help everybody whose chart I look, look at. Um, with awesome insights and direction and ways to maximize good energy and work with challenging energy. If you want to have more um, astrological information every month also, you can sign up for my Storyteller newsletter on my website at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Um, I don't have time to cover all the major aspects that occur in a month. There are chimes and squares and every kind of angle, and I make a summary of those in my Storyteller newsletter along with energies that go along with that, and you have it, you know, in a written form in the newsletter for you to mark on your calendar and refer back to. So if you want to supplement the video and you're really interested in astrology and it resonates with you, then definitely sign up for that, and you get a free gift for signing up for the newsletter, which is also free. Take wonderful care, and have a wonderful April.